peculiar talk with all the choices waste. Quark at four arms loves to grab your answer is to lie the bed. If you're standing on the corner all alone and feeling low, live the birds will come and get you singing E-I-A-D-O. La 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 la. That's a good one, it's better, Beryl. Yeah. The Colony Hotel in magnificent woodland setting and tropical gardens. Every room with balcony, bath and shower. Terrace bar, all-night discotheque, international cuisine. Oh, it sounds fantastic. Where is it? Kingston. Kingston? <laughs> oh, I've been there. What's a Kingston? Yeah, you go down to London and turn right. <laughs> no, Kingston, sorry. Kingston, Jamaica. Oh, book a banana boat. We'll leave in the morning. <laughs> all right, Beryl, you think of something. We've got one week and £25. We're changing us on New Brighton Beach. <laughs> Where we're going on, we can't afford a tent. Well, I'm rustling up the ground sheet. <laughs> I'll go and get you, cos see if there's anything in there. Right. Now, ladies, when making an apple pie, it is advisable to have a little pastry left over for decoration. So what you do is, you see, you take your knife and you cut around the edges like this. Oh, Sam! Sam, quick! Sam, I'm baking it! Quick! This is good. A small cottage in secluded cliff top. Right. Own garden. <laughs> You've missed. You do it every time, Sam. That's because you make too much every time. Well, I can't help it. It just grows. <laughs> things like that that keep us in a state of poverty. It's only a little blob of pastry. Little blobs of pastry cost money. If you stop making pies, we could afford to go to Jamaica. What? Sam, you are knocking. Yeah, well, I've got something to be knocky about, I not I remember? Oh, I forgot your mum and dad. Now, listen, Sam, listen. They've parted, and that's that, right? You didn't see what I saw last night. Oh, I forgot it was visiting day. Poor little daddy moping in his bed sitter, and mummy wandering about that great big house, trying to keep up appearances in front of the neighbours. What's she telling him? He's away on business. Oh, well, that's parents for you. I don't know where I've gone wrong, Beryl. They never turn out the way you want them to. <laughs> You've just got to let them grow up and learn the hard way. You spend your whole life making sacrifices for them, and then what happens? You turn round and then go and muck it all up. I shouldn't worry, Sand. Yeah, it's easy for you to say that. What would happen if it was your parents? Ah, well, it wouldn't happen to my mum and dad, you see, because they believe in sticking together because of the dog. <laughs> <laughs> I just don't know how I'm going to cope with it. The way you're going to cope with it is you're going to go away on holiday and when you come back it will have coped with itself. You're right, Beryl. Do you know, occasionally you are right. I know. Right, well, I've turned the oven up to full, so I'll just lock it in for an hour. <laughs> what are you doing, cooking it or welding it? <laughs> hey, come on, come on, what about this holiday now? Let's take your mind off it. Pony trekking. What? Pony trekking, that would take my mind off things. It certainly would, you'd spend all your time putting me back on my horse. <laughs> I think riding across the Pennines. Sandra, have you forgotten we went riding once before and we couldn't get across the road? Yeah, but it turned out to be good fun in the end, though, didn't it? Oh, hilarious. The horses decided to go for a dip and we ended up with tadpoles for a lunch. Oh, right, forget it, forget it. No, we won't forget it. Hey, Sam, this is more like it, Blackpool. Blackpool? I hate Blackpool. Hanging about on the promenade in kiss-me-quick hats. It's better than hanging from a cliff top hanging jodspers. <laughs> you go to Blackpool if you want. Listen, Sam, listen. Oh, yes, Mrs. Sankey's Shangri-La boarding house. Oh, bed and breakfast and high tea. High tea. None of your ground floor rubbish. <laughs> Situated on the Golden Mile. I want something different, Beryl. I mean, just think of horse and rider. Think of mists and heather. Think of fairgrounds and fellas. <laughs> oh, it's no good, Belle. I tried to educate you into the finer things of life. It's like putting champagne in a dog's bowl. That's because I'm one of nature's mongrels. To me, the finer things of life are smoky chimneys and scouts on Sundays. Stop whimpering. Oh. Stop whimpering about your underprivileged background, Beryl. Some of the world's finest composers come from places far worse than Bootle. Yeah, but they had talent. I can't even compose a shopping list. Oh, all right, all right. We'll do it your way. Thanks, Sam. <laughs> Blackpool, here we come. 
Oh, I'll get it. You polish your bucket and spade. Hello. Hello, Sandra. Did you go to see your father? Yeah, I went straight from you. Not that it interests me, but how was he? Unhappy. Well, he always was miserable. I don't suppose you consider going back to him, Mummy. Now, Sandra, we've been through all that. Wild horses on bended knees wouldn't drag me back. I don't think you realise that this all started a very long time ago. Now, did I ever tell you about the time we got engaged? I think you did mention it, yes. Well, I'll give you the full details. Oh, no. We went to this shop. Listen, dream now, about Mrs. Wallace. Sankey oh, Shangri-La oh, boarding oh, house with to bed and breakfast on the fabulous golden mine. I can't stand it! Well, don't then. It'll grow on you. I've said I'll go, now shut up. That's exactly what I said to him. I <laughs> had no reply, none at all. Well, she's nagging that cushion to death. <laughs> Sandra, are you there? Yes, Mummy, I'm here. I've heard every word you've said. Not that I want to bother you with my problems. Just tell your father that I shall soldier on. Oh, yes, and tell him to bring his slippers back. The dog's beginning to chew mine. <laughs> Goodbye, Mummy. So, what do you think? I think I'll go mad. No, I mean about the holiday. Oh, I'm not going. I've changed my mind. I've got to stay at home and sort out the family mess. Oh, well, I suppose I'll have to go galloping across the Pennines alone. The Lone Ranger. <laughs> Pony checking? Yes. You mean you'd go? Of course I'll go. Oh, go on, read me the worst. Well, we start out each morning at 8.30. I hope the horses aren't too big. I've only got a three-foot leg span. <laughs> and we do four miles a day. I'll come back shaped like a wishbone. And we stop off at a different place every night for a meal. Is it all in, or do we have to pay extra for the nose bags? <laughs> I'm really going to enjoy that, Feral. Of course, I would enjoy it more if Mummy and Daddy were all right. I can't help worrying about them. It's on my mind all now the time. Now, stop worrying about that, because, listen, we're going to sort that out before we're going to go. And we're going to do it together. So go and get our coats. Where are you going? To rescue the oven from my pie. <laughs> got a car in this road, Beryl. Yeah, but they don't all park them outside your house, do they? How much is that, please? That'll be 52 p love. Oh. Hey, he's a bit of all right, too. It's probably somebody's husband. Good girl, half. He looks too good to be somebody's husband. What are you suggesting? I am suggesting that somebody is having a bit of hanky-panky. Then I'll trust you. And would you believe it's your mother? What? It can't be. Oh, Mummy. Are you getting out? Do you mind? We've got a bit of a problem. Just chat amongst yourself. <laughs> I've been insurance man. What are this time of night? Whoosh. Let's listen. Ivor. Hello, Thelma. Oh, Ivor, you shouldn't. Neither should you, missus. <laughs> so what do we do now? We just go in as planned. My mother is above reproach. I have no doubt whatsoever about my mother's innocence. My mother is a good and chaste lady. we better phone her up. <laughs> right, we've come to a decision. Drive to the nearest phone box. Right. Would you do this to your mother? No, I'd just shout through the letterbox, give him a chance to get out the back door. Right, I've got the money. Tell me when to bung it in. Oh, yeah, OK. Is it ringing? Yeah. Well, why isn't she answering? 
She's got to get to the phone first. Where does she keep it? In the attic? <laughs> She'll be putting the flowers in water. Oh, yes. Putting the flowers in water in the attic. <laughs> she just doesn't want to be disturbed. Beryl, give her time. Right, stand by for another decision. Come on. Now what? Let's check just one more time. Right, reverse to where you were before you started. What? All the way to Allerton? <laughs> You're so stupid over there. I get all the big jobs. <laughs> life. Right, back to Allerton, please. All that way, just to make a ruddy phone call. <laughs> Some people it's sacred, but you see, to others it's like a prison sentence. <laughs> Nathan, your mum's out on parole. <laughs> Jump into conclusions, Beryl. You've no proof of anything. I mean, she doesn't act like someone in love. Remember what you were like when you first met Robert? You went all funny. I did not. Of course you did. You couldn't stop gazing at yourself in mirrors, windows, brass doorknobs, even clear soup. <laughs> <laughs> And leave your fingernails alone, you'll get indigestion. <laughs> I just keep expecting a crisis. Listen, it's probably your grandmother to say she's eloping with the coal man. <laughs> oh, good morning, my dear. Mrs. Hushinson, we didn't expect to see you this early. It's the early bird that catches the worm. And did you? <laughs> <laughs> Sandra? She's in there. She's just going to bed. To bed? Yes, she didn't sleep last night. I think it's her nerves. Oh, young girls like you, why have you got to worry about nerves? <laughs> Life is just one big bowl of cherries. Like you're at. <laughs> oh, girl. Oh, Sandra, darling. I'm sorry to hear that you're not sleeping. Perhaps you need a little holiday. Well, we've just arranged one, actually. Oh, have you? Good. Where to? The Pennines. The Pennines, oh, how lovely. Scorched landscape, withered wastes, rugged rocks. You know, I must do something about this hem. I think it could come up a bit. Would you agree? Oh, yeah, definitely. It's my knees, you see. I suddenly discovered they're rather good. <laughs> they are? Yes. I was looking at them this morning and I was really quite impressed. <laughs> you say? Yes. Oh, how romantic. It conjures up pictures of barbecues in potholes, <laughs> wine-living wanderers and horses. Horses, oh yes, how clever of you. Horses and gypsies and fire and music, you know. There must be Romany blood in me. And all these years it's been bottled up somewhere inside me. Probably in your knees. <laughs> mm, I'm managing. I expect you're finding that house uh, a little bit big for one. Well, I haven't noticed. It gives me room to spread my wings. Uh, do you think this powder's a bit pale for me? Oh, borrow a bit of my blush. Oh, yeah. oh thank you, my yeah. dear. Oh, Pink Sin. What a delightful name. <laughs> well, there's face shapers, face glosses, uh, face moulders. There's a full repair kit there. <laughs> <laughs> Did you come for anything special, Mummy? Well, yes. As a matter of fact, I did. I came for some advice. Oh, well. 
We can advise you, can't we, Beryl? Yes, yes. You see, I have to choose, and at my age, it's not easy. Oh, I don't know. At your age, it should be easy. There's less to choose from. <laughs> come on, come on. Well, I felt I needed to talk to somebody young, with progressive ideas and an open mind. Oh, our minds are very open, aren't they, Beryl? Yeah, they're boggly. <laughs> well, the thing is this. At my time of life, which do you think would be better for me? A caftan or bell bottoms and clogs? Is that it? Yes. Yeah. Well, well, if that's all you've come to talk about, I'll go and put the kettle on. I'll make some coffee. Oh, I prefer tea, I think. Um, Earl's Grey or Chapsong or uh, just an old bag. <laughs> <laughs> oh, what an amusing girl. But you disapproved of her. Oh, nonsense. Who am I to disapprove of anybody? Oh, I must do something about my hair. I meant to wash it last night, but I was ever so busy. Um, by the way, darling, you uh, you didn't telephone last night by any chance, did you? Oh, no. Only I just popped out for a moment, and as I was putting the key in the lock, I thought I heard the telephone ringing. Yes, well, we hung on as long as we could. <laughs> what time would that be? About the same time as the car drew up. Beryl. Car? What car? Oh, well, um, somebody just happened to have a visitor, just as we happened to be passing. <laughs> Didn't you? <laughs> oh, that would be my friend, Mrs. Thompson. Oh, yes? What's she, a male impersonator? <laughs> On the other hand, it could have been Mr. Evans. Evans the flowers? Have you been spying on me? Oh, no, I mean, no, no. Of course, I don't have to ask who put you up to it. I've always said that girl was a bad influence. Now, listen, Mrs. Hutchinson, what you do with your life is your own affair. <laughs> if you'll excuse the expression. <laughs> but uh, I think it's affecting Sandra's nerves. No, it isn't, Mummy. No, it isn't. She's exaggerating. Honestly, she is. Oh, the kettle's going now. You see, the kettle's going. <laughs> It's like that when the phone goes, the doorbell goes. I dread to think what's going to happen on Sunday when the church bell goes. Oh, <laughs> Sandra. It's all right, Mummy. It's all right. It's your life and Beryl and I understand. You have no right to be questioned about it. None at all. Thank you, darling. <laughs> well, the question is, what are we going to do about this infernal triangle of yours? It's not what you think. Ivor and I are just good friends. We've built up a relationship that you could describe as platonic. Handy word, that. Now, now, listen, Sandra. By sheer accident, you have discovered a situation that I was going to tell you about anyway. Last night, Ivor and I... Isn't it funny? I keep feeling she's going to chip in. It's like having an unpredictable parrot in the room. I wasn't going to say a word. I'm not even listening. Oh. Well. Where was I? Last night, Ivor and I. <laughs> well, we had a talk. And I mean, we're not children, and when you've been through life's mill as we have, we feel you're entitled to a little happiness. Are you trying to tell us that Ivor and you are serious? Well, why not? I mean, your father and I are separate. I'm not doing anything behind his back. He knows, then? Well, not yet. <laughs> so you are doing it behind his back? Well, Sandra, if he did know, it'd make no difference. If a man came to the door, stripped... Chance would be a fine thing. <laughs> To the waste. And as for me, your father had just ask him in and tell him to wait. We don't love each other anymore. Sandra, what's love got to do with it? They're talking about marriage. Oh, <laughs> you dear child. So young and yet so old. That's me. <laughs> Where was I? This naked fella's just come to call for <laughs> Speaking hypothetically, of course. Well, we can't help the way we talk. <laughs> We're talking about you and Ivor. Oh, Sandra. Oh, it's charming. Absolutely charming. He's got a BSc, you know. Well, they can cure anything these days. <laughs> Mummy, if you are sure that it's the right thing to do, I won't stand in your way. How did you meet him? Was it romantic? <laughs> 
Well, yes, it was rather. <laughs> it came to the house one evening to inquire about my central heating. You don't have central heating. I know, but it, it just called on the off chance to see if I wanted it. <laughs> and she did. <laughs> anti wop sting. Bandages. Yes. Plasters. Yes. Antiseptic cream. Yes. Stomach pills. Yes. One yard of satin ribbon. Oh, that makes a nice change. What's that for? A tourniquet. Oh. <laughs> Happy little bag. Who's carrying the iron lung? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> medical section, you. Get a dull day, we can whip each other's appendix out. Mm. Best <laughs> be prepared. Right, Sam. Well, I think that's everything. Yeah. Well, I'm really looking forward to it now. I told you everything would turn out all right. Your mum's got Ivor and your dad's got his freedom. Just think, this time tomorrow we'll be galloping across the Pennines. <laughs> <laughs> It'll be birds twittering. It'll be breezes blowing. It'll be a bloody miracle, Sam. Have you felt the weight of this thing? Straighten up. I can't think he's a buckling. It's a question of balance, oh, Meryl. Oh, yes. Oh, I see. Oh, it's all right once you get going. Yeah. I'm stronger than I thought. Off the door, Bill. I'll go. Ah, thanks. Have you got the hamster ready? Yeah, she's in there. Well, let's go and get it then. Evening. Hello, sir. What are you doing down there, Barrett? <laughs> what? What? Has he got a name? Thingy. Yeah, just about describes it and all. <laughs> Listen, no applause, please. <laughs> For my next trick, I will now vault across the table. Oh, I'm <laughs> sorry, Beryl. Go and help her out. Oh, right, right. Daddy, help me out of it. Here you are. Ah, well, any special instructions for Thingy before I go? No, just feed him, give him a drink, put him in bed and tuck him up. Oh, Lord, it'd be like living with your mother again. <laughs> Except he won't answer back. Ah, that's one consolation. <laughs> well, have a good holiday and don't forget to send me a postcard. Oh, thanks, Daddy. Oh, oh Lord, it's your mother. Uh, don't tell her, me. I, I don't want to see her. He's let you down, hasn't he? It's happening to us all the time. He tried to take everything I've got. Oh, I like. It started with the city. Oh, it always starts there. No, but the carpet. We know the type. Mm. And finally, the television. <laughs> right, I've lost the thread of it now. <laughs> oh, you mean he's a thief? He stole everything. I came back just as they were loading the van. I went to the phone box and called the police. If I hadn't, the house would have been empty. Oh, 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 mummy. I'm sorry, I didn't want to spoil your holiday, but I've got nobody to turn to. Well, there is Daddy. Oh, I couldn't face your father. Oh, go on, force yourself. No, no, I couldn't. Have, I wouldn't have the courage to go around there. What if he came to you? What if what? She said, what if he came to you? Right. Well, say hello. Hello. You said hello. I know. We'll say it back then. Hello. Look where she is. I can see how she is. We'll ask her. How are you? How am I? Very well. I'm very well. Oh. By Jove, you can't get a word in edgeways. <laughs> Mummy's had a very nasty shock. I know. I heard. He's very upset. You're very upset, aren't you? Yes. Well, show it then. He didn't take my blow lamp, did he? <laughs> no, he didn't take your bloody blow lamp. We're making progress, Sam. I'm sorry, I don't usually swear. It's my nerves. Well, mine aren't any too good either. Nerves? Well, now. Oh, well, we know the cure for that, don't we, Sandra? Do we? Yes, yes. What do we do when our nerves are getting on our nerves? 
We take them on holiday, don't we? Oh, to the Pennines, you mean? Yes. You like the Pennines, don't you, Mrs. Hutch? Yes. So how would you like to spend a week together with the elements? It's up to him. Daddy? Whatever your mother says. Right. The decision is unanimous. Unanimous. In <laughs> what am I trying to say, Sand? Unanimous. Yes, yes, right. Oh, well, I think they've done very well. Yes, it's amazing what they can get done when they put their minds to it. Now, we're just going to make a phone call to change the bookings into your names and you two just sit there and dream about your second honeymoon. Oh. <laughs> Do you like my new outfit, Henry? Yes, it's very nice. Shall I wear it in the Pennines for us? Yes. And will you wear your grey mohair suit with the velvet bow tie? <laughs> Aye, all right. Well, don't just sit there. Kiss me. <laughs> There's no need to overdo it, <laughs> You know, I'm quite looking forward to this holiday. I think it'll jog us out of our troubles. <laughs> Mummy and Daddy jogging about on horseback. <laughs> I know it's perfect. Oh, no. And what happens if they start rowing again? Well, they won't be able to unless they're both on the same horse. And if things get too bad, I mean, there's enough first aid in that knapsack. So we don't get our holiday after all. Hang on. Uh, yes, you have. Two single rooms starting tomorrow. Yes, Miss Hutchinson and Miss, Miss Hennessy, yes. Oh, thank you, Mrs. Sangi. I know we'll be very happy at the Shangri-La. Blackpool? Oh, very oh, yeah. honest. Oh, listen, do you take hamsters? <laughs> oh, you do, but... <laughs> <laughs> Thank you.